Good evening. It is really good to be here and good to see you all. This is the best part, is I get to make some announcements. The announcements are that there's stuff that's going to be happening around here very soon. And if you see this kind of orange salmon piece of paper that we have in the bulletin, that is a listing of all the stuff that's coming back, and some of it, like I said, is soon. So anything from Connections 56, there's a pool party, which I will not be going to because it starts at 8 and doesn't end until midnight, and I don't do that anymore. There's Backpack Blessing that's coming up at the first part of August, Newbie 3 for our littlest kids that come on a Saturday and they spend time getting to know the church. Um, it's a wonderful way in which they kind of build connections with each other. There's a Storm Chaser bat, uh, baseball game. There's information in the bulletin about that. The church picnic is going to happen in August. There's a sign-up sheet out in the commons area. Um, this year, we're not going to do it as a potluck. We're going to do it where we provide the food. Um, so we need you to sign up so we know how many people are coming. So if you can do that, if you haven't signed up um, here, just call the church office, we'll add you to the list. Um, but that way we can uh, have enough food for everybody because Lutherans like to eat. And then also Sunday school and children and youth activities are coming up, so read through those. Um, and they're all on the church website. If there's something to register for or anything like that, please um, go to that site and do that. And today we especially welcome the Huff family um, back here that Sevilla is back there somewhere, but she will be baptized today, and we're excited that you have joined us um, and brought so many of your family. Yes, there she is. She's a happy child. Yes. So thank you that you are here tonight. Um, if you are a guest or visitor with us tonight, we invite you to fill out the card in front of you in the pew rack that says guest. If you put that in the offering plate, it gives us a chance just to say thank you for worshiping with us here um, at Rejoice. So I invite you to stand as we prepare our hearts for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves, and we rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed, by your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. In your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doing, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In this day, in the, his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please join with me in reading responsively Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second lesson is from Ephesians chapter 2. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near to my blood to by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the, Christ, through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access to one spirit. To the Father. Mixed up pages. There we go. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Word of God, word of life. 
Thanks be to God. you, Kaylee and Beth. That was wonderful. They said they were testing my Hebrew, <laughs> which I took in college, which was a long time ago. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope that you are having a good summer. God only knows this summer is different than last summer. I hope you've been able to get away a little bit, maybe take a vacation or just be able to get out of the house and do a few things and feel comfortable again. It's good for us 
to get away from the hectic stuff, the things that stress us out, and to take vacations. I looked up what it is for us to take a vacation and what kind of some things that help us when we do that. And what happens is it says that to those who take a vacation, take care of themselves, go away for a little while, they improve their physical health. It says stress can contribute to heart disease and high blood pressure. For both men and women, the New York Times reported taking a vacation every two years compared to every six will lessen the risk of coronary heart disease and heart attacks. It's pretty good advice. It says it improves mental health. Neuroscientists have found that chronic exposure to stress can alter your brain structure and bring on anxiety and depression. So take a vacation. Increased mental motivation comes from taking a vacation. It says many who return from vacation are more focused and productive. Studies have found that chronic stress can make it difficult to achieve certain tasks and cause memory problems. It says it improves family relationships. Spending time enjoying, enjoying life with loved ones can build and keep strong relationships. On that one, I guess it's who is your family. You know, sometimes a lot of family is a little too much, but many times it is great. This summer, we were able to load into a 12-passenger van with just six of us because we knew we didn't want to be that close. <laughs> and we drove from Omaha to Waco, Texas, because you know what's in Waco, Texas. Joanna Gaines and Magnolia. <laughs> I've been there twice. <laughs> and then we got in and drove to Fredericksburg, Texas, a wonderful German town, wonderful places to eat, shop. There's a brewery. My son and I enjoyed that the most. And there's a lot of shopping, family time. 15 hours in the van, one way. We got close. It says it decreases burnout to take a vacation. Employees who take regular time to relax are less likely to experience burnout, making them more creative and productive than overworked, underrested counterparts. And basically, the last one says it boosts your happiness. All of these ways in which it says we need to just get away and be away from the stressors that are in our lives, if it's our job, if it's something that's going on at home, whatever it might be, is to step away from it at times. It is good for us. Jesus knew that it was good for us as well. Because did you see in this gospel text today where Jesus has his disciples coming back to him and as the disciples come back, they're telling Jesus everything that they had been doing. You know, they had been speaking about the gospel. They probably were healing people and feeding people, and they were just sharing all of it with him. And basically, he said, that's nice. He didn't give them a pat on the shoulder or anything, but he said, you know what, let's go away for a little while. He knew that they had been working hard, and they thought, you know what, it's time to just go away to find some peace. And so they get into that boat and they leave and they go away and find a place where it is just away from others. But eventually, everybody catches up with him. It was kind of hard to be Jesus and not gather a crowd. But the best part was he knew that it was important for them to get away, to be away and just have some rest. To tell them also, not is it just time to rest, but it's time to enjoy just being in God's presence. What I found interesting was in the Hebrew tradition, it is even God who is given a day off. When we think about the days of creation, and then it says that the world was created in six days and then God rested. And that even in that Hebrew tradition, it is when you go to worship, it's not to just ask a bunch of favors of God. It's a time not to ask for things, but rather to give thanks and praise 
for what we have, for what God has given to us. So this time that we are away and separated out from the stressors of life is also that time then to build a relationship with God. Because see, Jesus took his disciples away, and it says they also just spent time in the stillness, in the quiet, in the presence of God. That is why we come to this place. Many, many months back, when we were finally able to come back and at least have some form of worship, and we were all sitting here with masks on and all the taped off pews, I had more people say, it was so nice just to be back in this space. Just to be able to sit and be still for an hour. To be in the presence of others and in the presence of God. Jesus is calling us to do that. Is to spend time building a relationship with God and we can't do that simply if we're just running around all the time in the midst of our busy lives. It means sitting down and enjoying God's presence. It takes time, and it takes a little effort. There's a story about a young man who worked on a farm. He worked there for the whole summer. He confided in the farmer that what he wanted to do while he was there was to build some strong muscles. So the farmer told him that he could easily do that while he was there by picking up sacks of potatoes. Picking up a sack of potatoes in each hand and holding it up, first starting with the five-pound sack and then holding it and this, doing that enough that it becomes comfortable and then work on the 10-pound sack and then move that to the 20-pound sack. And finally, by the end of the summer, he was able to lift up a 100-pound sack. And then he went and told the farmer how good he had done and he had held it for a minute. And the farmer was so proud of him, but the gentleman said to the farmer, yes, and next week I'm going to put potatoes in the sacks. See, it takes a little effort. We can show up and have a conversation with God, but sometimes there's got to be some meat to it. There's got to be some weight. A time when we offer up to God, what are the things that are going on in our lives? How we are struggling or how we are broken. And that we need God to help us get through it. Again, that is why we come here. Why do we come to worship. Is it about us? I think not. Is it about being entertained? I think not. What it is to come and worship is to literally, as the Hebrew tradition says, to come not for a time to ask for things, but rather to sit in the stillness of God's presence and to lift up your praise and thanks even during a week maybe that hasn't been good or a time that you have had great rejoicing but no matter what it's just to come before god and share what is going on in your life we do that as a community of christ it's why we come to worship and praise this god who has given us his son he knew that we couldn't do it on our own so he sends Christ to us. He says, you know what? Each day when you get up from sleep, that you can remind yourself what Christ has done for you by the waters of your baptism, that you are a loved and forgiven child of God. That is what we are thankful for. That is what we praise God for. And we do it all in the name of Christ. Amen.
invite you to turn and face the baptismal font as we celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Who presents this child for baptism? Or did you, we present? Parents, as you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture her in faith and prayer so that your child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in the Christian faith in life? If so, respond, we do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture this child in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and communion with the church? If so, respond, we do. People of God, do you promise to support this child and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, respond, we do. We do. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay, if you'll bring Sophia up here. We're going to take her headband off here. I'll get that all wet. Stick it up there for you. <laughs> and turn her a little that way. I know. <laughs> there you go. Sophia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, I know you were sleeping. Oh, I know. That's okay. give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Sevilla with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, 
the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. To be a child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Receive this white robe of righteousness, a sign of Christ's covering of all your sin, now and forever. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Through baptism, God has made this child a new member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same heavenly Father, and a worker with us in the kingdom of God. Let us give a rejoice welcome to Sevilla. You can blow it out. You can return to your seats. If you remain standing, we'll join together in prayer. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. Tend your church, O God. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel. Raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing a call to ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love and justice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Restore your creation, O God. Sustain croplands and pastures and safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment, revive lands recovering from natural disasters, and protect coastlands threatened by rising oceans. Hear us, O God. Reconcile the nations, O God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heal your people, O God. Look with compassion on immigrants, exiles, and all who are afraid or feel lost. Give rest to those who are weary, comfort to those who are grieving, and recovery to those who are ill. Especially this day, we lift before you Tim and Ramona. Continue to be their strength. And also surround the family of Judy that they who might know of the promise of resurrection and new life, that they will find comfort and joy in your presence. Both gracious God, many things that are on our hearts and in our minds we offer before you now. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Nourish this congregation, O God. Prepare the table where we receive food for our hungering spirits. Renew our commitment to provide for one another and revitalize our ministries of feeding and nurturing hungry neighbors. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You lead us home, O God. We give thanks for all who have died, now citizens with the saints. As you have received them into your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. All are welcome to the Lord's table. You may be seated.
invite you to stand. Let us pray. O oh God, in this Holy Communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.